Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself an advanced nether fort, not to be confused with a nether fortress. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And a new thing I'm going to be incorporating into my tutorials, if I remember, is a little bit of a difficulty meter, so that way people can, you know, know what they're getting into. This is a bit of a harder build, and it does include a little bit of piston door action. So, I'm going to put that there for good measure, so that way people can sort out what tutorials are they able to do, which ones they can't do, and which ones are just badly explained like the UFO. So, here we have ourselves a pretty large pallet. Of course, the block choices might make this a little bit hard in survival, but you want to get lots of blackstone, swap out this column here that I'm pointing at. If you are in a soul sand valley, maybe even a basalt delta, and a warped forest, and use crimson for the nether waste in crimson forest. So, we're also going to be using some iron trapdoors. Might want to skip out on those if you're still a little bit early game, but I intend for this to be a pretty permanent base. And then from here, what you want to do is figure out what you want to do to get in. I opt for a piston door like this, using a glass column in order to get the redstone signal up. So, Feel free to pause, it's not the best redstone, I'm not an engineer, but essentially what this will do is if I press this button here, then it will open and close the door. That's all you need to do. Is it the most efficient? No. Does it work? Yes. So if you can come up with a better one and post a video link down below, I'll pin your comment. So with that in mind, choose a location. You can do it just about anywhere. I happen to recommend doing it near a lava sea because of course striders, and I already built a strider pen tutorial in case you want to do that. A little bit of a different build style though, so keep that in mind. So once you're ready to do it, examine the wall and dig right into it. Make sure there aren't any giant caves or anything. Of course, I thought this might be a good build location, until I realized this is a pretty thin wall. So, of course, I'm going to have to make accommodations to make sure it doesn't jut through, or I'd have to incorporate it into the base design. Because, well, the nether is pretty hard to work with. So keep all of this in mind. With the door now in place, and a plan in order to counter the problems going to be faced by this open area here, answer, stairs, just go down. What we're going to do is have our relatively simplistic redstone contraption. I made this myself, hence why it's not the most efficient. So you can either have a pulse extender here to add a little bit of delay, or you can skip it. This is how it works. A button, and then a redstone torch inverts a signal, and then from here, this powder snow bucket will act as an on-off switch with this comparator taking two blocks to repeater so that way we can differentiate the signals. From here, pulse extender in order to extend it if you want. And then, these glass columns will enable and disable the door by sending a redstone signal. Press the button, and you'll notice that they shut. Press it again, then they'll take a moment because the pulse extender, a little bit of glitchiness there, you need more repeaters if that happens. And then, that's how it will work. If you do not want the signal extender, the pulse extender, then it will close and open a lot quicker but that may or may not be in your best interest. Personally, I'm going to leave it out because I kind of like this faster animation and I'm not making it look like a zipper with it. With this in mind, we now have a door. So I may or may not have forgotten to record an intermediate clip here, but you want to start building the entrance to your base. Since this is the nether, utilize all the nethery things. And don't worry about accidentally coming off as too edgy. In case you haven't noticed, there's an ocean of lava. You can't exactly beat that. So what you want to do is examine your redstone, make sure that it's openable from both sides. So like this, they're in unison. I removed the pulse extender and did some other small changes. So if you can see here, it's a little bit of spaghetti redstone, but essentially what this does is it uses repeaters in order to make sure both of them activate at the same time. Notice. Both of them go through this repeater here, one redstone tick, and then this one has an extra repeater, so that's another redstone tick, even though it doesn't need it. 
and then over here one so it can actually reach because it does need it and then both of them will take two redstone ticks to activate of course the opening sequence is a little bit longer because the powder snow flip flop switch because i do not know any better methods that don't take up lots of space so if i press a button you can see it needs a moment or actually no the side's just broken excuse that this side will open and notice it's in unison so while this looks like a proper base entrance and it does have a functioning piston door or at least on one side you can do more this is the nether i mean you don't really have to worry about destroying terrain because in case you haven't noticed the nether has pretty simplistic terrain compared to the overworld all the biomes are relatively common so don't worry about wrecking the terrain make a large front lawn make it interesting and then once you're done with that maybe add some pillars and then you can move on now if you add some extra details you might end up with something like this you'll notice that there are small pieces of blackstone here although they might appear decorational it's really because uh the redstone didn't fit yeah that's all so with all this now in place you can see much more interesting entrance you might have to blend it into the terrain I used world edit, hence harsh borders, I'll be fixing that. And one thing of note is one, of course fill in all of your lava, otherwise it's going to look weird. And two, if you have some deep lava like this, like if you fell down here you are not getting back out, well don't do that, instead place signs below it so that way in case you fall in you can end up in a safe room. Some powder snow or some cauldrons filled with water will also help with this, since if you fall into here, you can put out the fire on yourself. Maybe even keep a dispenser filled with fire resistance potions. Maybe also add an exit to there in case, you know, you need to get in and out, say, you still die. So with all this now in place, what you want to do is open your door, and then go wherever direction you need to. Of course, I have to contend with this big cave thing back here. So, I'm going to be going downwards, so that way I can avoid that. Of course, be careful of all the small lava pockets, and if you make it deep enough, you might even find some ancient debris while doing this. The entrance is now complete. You can see that if you use a lot of blocks like this, even from afar, you're going to notice it, because, well, you can see all the blackstone and lava. Now, what you want to do is make the connector to the rest of the base. And this is going to vary a lot depending on your environment. Of course, if you're in creative mode, you just do simple reconnaissance and spectator. Or, if you do not have spectator mode for whatever reason, you just dig about a little. Because of course, if I saw this, went down, and then went down too much, I'd encounter this lava lake. Which means I have to stay in a very specific zone in order to avoid both issues. And what you want to do from here is one, of course, adapt the base, and two, texture with gilded blackstone if available. I made a staircase because, of course, I need to go down anyways, and a staircase is much more fashionable than a ladder. With this, now I can start building the rest of the base. And I'm going to start off with the industrial areas first, where I can have my anvils and such. And then I can move on to some of the more cozy areas like respawn anchor points. And then maybe even a place with some pillagers, or I mean piglins. And then barter with those in a fancy area. Of course, swap those around as you want. Once you're done with that part, you'll likely need some sort of hub for your base. I personally want to do this mainly because I get to make a fancy ceiling. So you can see I used intricate designs, some polished basalt on the sides, smooth basalt up there, and then some layers of orange stained glass spaced one block apart with some lava on top. So it's kind of like some sort of sun up here. So this is quite interesting I'd say. And next up is filling this up with lava. If I were in survival, I'd add signs down here because of course this is a pretty deep pit. You don't exactly want to be burning down there. And considering this was a similarly deep one, well, I'd do it anyways. But I cannot be bothered because, well, I'm a YouTuber. I get to do whatever I want. But anyways, from here, 
let lava come in here if that fits the vibe. And then what you want to do is flood it. So I'm just using a little bit of world edit here. And what do you know? It looks quite nice here. So with our lava on the ceiling, lava down here, all of that. Now we can start making each individual segment. So what I do, one side might want to be a nether portal. You should incorporate piglin bartering. Maybe a hoglin farm. So maybe hoglins on this side, piglins on the other. Storage down here. And then we can go to a bit more fancy of an area where we have respawn anchors and a nether portal. While building in the nether, you might notice that even if there isn't fire or lava nearby, everything is about light level 7 and still visible. So you can see when I go inside the base, it all works. However, once you start getting into interior sections like this, well, you'll notice a lack of lighting severely affects the build. So make sure to keep the places lit up. Even if it doesn't involve fire or lava, stuff like lanterns will still work. And another thing, make sure to use your environment to your advantage. Of course, I tried going down. I did not go deep enough. So might as well use this ravine to help me out. On the other side, where I'm in the progress of building a hoglin farm, I ended up showing up here anyways. Well, why not make a roof here made out of glass and adding a staircase so that way I have an alternative entrance. Although it doesn't have to be as grand, still, it's a nice little thing you can add to it. So that way the build feels less cookie cutter and more personalized to every time you build it. Once you've added your lighting, then it's time to take a look at this bartering area I made. Of course, big ones are pretty important, so might as well dedicate a room for them. You can see it's quite complex, but here are a few things to note to make it simpler on you. One, you can use two layers of flooring, and then you can even make separate rooms. I use this fancy area here, which uses glowstone on the ceiling for lighting. And then right here, I have a pile of ores, so a little bit of a mining area. Remember to use your terrain around you, and then you can build pipes like this with trapdoors. I have magma at the end, so that way it's a little bit more of a transition. Hanging ores here that don't go anywhere. Could use this for parkour across the lava, which I placed here myself. If you're in survival mode, that would be pretty tough to do. So either set up a dripstone lava farm nearby, be at the lava ocean, or only do the top layer. I would recommend combining several of those. So. Because it connected up to the entrance, I added an alternative entrance. Although this is admittedly not very useful, still, if it's going somewhere else, say if there's an open area here, I could put the entrance here so that way I can enter from multiple directions because that's typically something you do in the nether. With all this in place and the detailing, it's not time for the hoglin farm. And I recommend putting another wart farm nearby and maybe even some other utilities. Next up is a little bit more of a living space. This one will have our hoglin farm. Considering I assume most of you do not like eating rotten flesh for every meal, well, your only sustainable source of food in that case would be pork. So hoglins it is. Make sure to keep them walled off because of course they're very hostile. They're bred with crimson fungus. So keep an area nice and clean of nylium here. So, use bone meal, get rid of the little bushes here, compost them, and then get more mushrooms to breed them. Then, we can have ourselves a nice little hopper minecart down here to collect drops. So, we can kill them right here, drops go in here, and then this chest will collect them all. Then, spiral staircase up, and then you can have your own area here if it connects to the surface. I recommend making this area with crimson nylium for more living space and for wood. So with all that in mind, it's now time for storage, which will be in this direction. I recommend just making a long hallway filled with chests, nothing terribly complicated. And then at the end of it, make another one of these fancy rooms and fill it up with your nether portal, your respawn anchor, and anything else you're missing. If you want, you can make a giant fancy nether portal. Now we have the final room, that being storage. I was going to have a different sort of plan by expanding this middle area, but this roof was too nice. So iron trapdoors are relegated to here. 
Anyways, you don't have to do iron trapdoors, but it might be interesting. So, what you want to do from here is a bunch of storage like this, and then you can either have more fancy rooms back here or something basic, a little bit of a brewing area. And then, once you have all of that, then you might want to make an extra exit to, you know, exit from this end, but otherwise your build will be finished at this point. And you can see it's very expandable considering how the nether is. We have this really cool looking front, and then we have the piston door. So if I, you know, press this, done, opens, and then click it again, closes. Could probably be improved, but we have this middle area, and then we have all of our nether-based utilities. Even if you don't plan on living in the nether, because of course, no water makes it quite annoying to deal with a lot of things, still might be a fun project to do, even if it's on a smaller scale. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out.